Live from downtown Detroit, home of WDIV and Click on Detroit, Local 4 News at 5 starts now. Local 4, we're in Rochester tonight getting our first look at this woman charged in a bizarre attack, biting a woman's face. And we're learning a lot about her right now. You see this, the feds are bringing the hammer down on another top UAW official. This one accused of taking more than $100,000 in kickbacks. All right, Mara, but we're going to begin with the best possible breaking news from Campus Martius. What a moment for the Detroit Youth Choir just a few minutes ago. I hope you were watching this live as it happened just a short time ago on Local 4, the Detroit Youth Choir getting its own $1 million prize, which of course they thought they missed out on, oh. on AGT. They were the AGT winners in our hearts, and now they got the money to match. This is just an impressive story. Keeps getting better and yeah. better every day. The look on all those faces, an absolutely amazing moment. Let's get right back out to Campus Marshes Park and our Kimberly Gill and Paula Tupman. What an afternoon, ladies. Yeah, hi Karen and Devin, good afternoon to you. I am so proud of this city. It was just an Isn't that amazing. Amazing is not even the word for it. I mean, that, being out in LA, I was a little bit um, in a cocoon. In a cocoon, yeah. exactly. But you didn't know what was going back here. We were going right, nuts. Right to come back and just see all the love and just all the purple. It is just, it is amazing. Did you get a chance to look out into that crowd oh, my when goodness. they were dancing and singing and doing the steps? Aren't you? Just I mean, it was, it was like a Red Wings right, celebration, right. wasn't a, it? A, a major sports team celebration. Yeah, right. it's electrifying. It, it, it really was incredible. And Kim Kimberly, you were on stage, but I was actually at a vantage yeah. where I could see when they made the million dollar announcement. So a $1 million endowment for these kids, making them not silver, but gold. That's right. And I, I gotta tell you, you should have seen their faces. It was incredible. Take a look. Under the brightest of lights, with the eyes of the world on you, you showed everyone the talent, the intelligence, and the dedication of the youth of Detroit. Thank you for what you have done. We have pulled our resources to establish a fund through the Community Foundation. And in just a matter of days, we pulled together an impressive amount totaling. Can I get a drum roll, please? Where's the band? <laughs> One million dollars! For this organization for more than 20 years. It means so much to these students. Uh, hard work, sacrifice. I to get my man. Everybody we got a million dollars. Like, it's, it's surreal. What's going through my mind is like, it can't be. It's, it's not possible. No way. And then she finally said it. And so now there's just like a feeling of, wow, we did it anyway. A million dollars forever. <laughs> this is amazing. Um, this means so much to me. I love you, Detroit. Thank you. Thank you for your support. I remember when we were in that tiny church in the basement and it was a, such a small group, like 12 of us. And now it's... 52 plus of us working so hard with everybody behind us. I just want to thank you. Wasn't that incredible? Incredible. Wasn't that amazing? Really is, We did yeah. it anyway. And you know, of course, we knew they did it. We knew it. Even, you know, when the announcement was made, and I think that a lot of people knew that Cody Lee was going to go ahead and win because he had so much of America's support. But Detroit moved the needle. Yeah. I mean, to get them that far and to come home, they are champions. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. So, obviously, a lot more to come. Are you crying? I know. I know. I it's hard. It. And you're exhausted. I, I get it. I get it. Listen, I, I do want to let you know, though, coming up, it sits because we want to explain what this endowment is and who made this possible yeah because really it was a yeoman's duty to pull together one million dollars in just a matter of days so we're gonna have that story at six but great job in california thank you great job on the stage have i fun. know detroit is so philanthropic i am so proud of this city and we're gonna have more coming up on the news at six we'll send it back to you guys in the studio devin and karen i just love hearing somebody so young talking about how it was in the old days when we were in the basement of that church <laughs> yeah, that was right? so great fantastic all right you guys we'll be back to you again here soon. Uh.
it feels really good starting a Friday oh, off on a great exactly news story right. like that. Man, it's great. Well, you can see it, obviously, from the live shot from Canvas Martius. It is a beautiful and sunny start mm -hmm. to the weekend. But this shot from our Windsor Skycam actually shows a little haze moving in. Ben, but should we be concerned about that? there uh, Karen and Devin but it's almost like him and the choir brought some of that uh, LA weather back with them because it is gorgeous out there as far as temperatures go it's 82 we've got the sunshine yes there's some noticeable humidity compared to what we've been dealing with and that does look like it's going to stick around all weekend long so the story is this mild and muggy tonight but even as temperatures are working in our favor there are going to be rain chances around both weekend days it's not the entire time and most of that stretch looks dry we'll time it out for you coming up and cooler and less humid air arrives just as we start fall on Monday, like clockwork. We'll talk more about that all coming up in a few minutes, guys. All right, Ben, let's get some of the uh, other news of the day. We are getting our first look at the woman accused of viciously biting another woman's face and ears. Allison Weaver appeared in court via video to be arraigned on assault charges in the attack. Our Sean Lay was in the courtroom as investigators released startling new information in the case. Not only are we getting our first look at Allison Weaver in court today, we're also learning a lot about her right now. Good morning. Could you state your name for us, please? Allison Thompson Weaver. It's our first look at Allison Weaver. She's accused of a dangerous and bizarre attack that has left a woman badly injured in the hospital right now. Late Monday into Tuesday at the Rochester Hills apartment complex, Lake Village Apartments, investigators say they found Weaver over a woman, both covered in blood. Deputies say Weaver allegedly bit the ear off of the woman, and there were bite marks all over the woman's face. Apparently, after the woman fended off sexual advances from Weaver. Who is Allison Weaver? We learned a lot about her in court today. She's 48 years old, divorced. She has a seven-year-old child that she does have full custody of. She did report full-time employment and human resources at ACRO um, and in Livonia for the past 10 years. She works from home. Her attorney says she's a single mom and should be let out on bond. Gamefully employed, single mom, member of our community her entire life. This is an isolated incident, Judge. She's never been in trouble before, no prior criminal history. But investigators on the case spoke up. I'd respectfully uh, would like to ask for a high cash bond, a minimum of $200,000. Saying the victim here is badly injured and is still in the hospital. They're asking for a high bond and serious limitations on Weaver if she is released on a tether. I know the victim is still in the hospital. I'm not sure when she's getting out, and she has several, several serious injuries. We're live tonight. Allison Weaver given a $75,000 bond from the judge. If she makes that bond, she'll have to wear a tether with a long list of re restrictions that include Karen and Devin, no alcohol, no drugs, no weapons, no contact with that victim who's recovering tonight. Back to you. Sean, such a bizarre and really horrific story. By doing some of your research, were you able to find out, was there a motive for this attack? Investigators still looking into that. The judge even brought it up saying she ordered a uh, medical examination for her, a forensic medical examination, her mental health status, also a toxicology exam that was already being done. She wants to see those results to see if any of that played a role in any of this to find out what was really going on. And obviously, we're thinking about the victim in this case and hoping she has hopefully a speedy recovery. Thank you, Sean. Absolutely. Let's now get to day five of the UAW strike on General Motors. And the big story is happening nowhere near the negotiating table. Let's get you caught up. Talks resumed around 930 this morning with the sides said to be making some progress toward a deal. UAW members, though, holding the picket line and GM plants across the U.S. And as a result of the strike, auto suppliers are now being forced to lay off workers as well. Overshadowing today's negotiations, a brand new indictment in the corruption scandal that has rocked the top echelon of the union. The indictment marks the 11th current or former UAW official to be accused of corruption. Jeff Petrick served as a former top aide to UAW Vice President Joe Ashton. Let's get to Mara McDonald. And Mara, this could not have come at a worse time for the union. Karen, I'll tell you, this is the criminal information on this case, and what's detailed in here is grim. Let me show you. 
Jeff Paterzik was the former top aide to UAW Vice President Joe Ashton, and the feds say he spent years bilking UAW vendors for kickbacks. As detailed in the federal criminal case, it worked like this. The UAW had a vendor for watches. That vendor was then expected to give kickbacks to top UAW brass. In this case, the allegation is Jeff Paterzik was getting checks from the vendor for various amounts, usually $25,000 a shot, that were being represented as being for antique furniture. There was no furniture. It was strictly a cash payment. The criminal information against Paterzik also details kickbacks given to another UAW official described right now as Union Official One, who is believed to be Ashton himself, totaling more than $550,000. Meanwhile, this Sunday, the UAW is calling for what they say is Solidarity Sunday. They're asking for UAW membership to show up at those GM picket lines to show their solidarity for those workers who are on strike. We're live downtown tonight at the federal courthouse. I'm Mara McDonald, Local 4. It's timing. All right, Mara. Not that you needed any, but there's new proof. Detroit gas stations are a top target for thieves. New tonight, what makes this smash and grab right here so scary and different from so many others? And from Australia to Ann Arbor, the issue that had millions of people around the world taking part in protests. But first, a mystery unfolding tonight in Dearborn after a woman dies in the middle of a field. That's next.